Hi guys, something different in today's video. I'm going to have a go at making a Star Wars themed mermaid. So I did this as part of the mermaid challenge that was on last year. So mermaid is like a drawing challenge that's set up by Tom Bancroft, um, who's an amazing animator. Um, I think he used to do a lot of work for Disney. So they do a challenge called mermaid each May and every day there's different prompts for you to create a different mermaid. And it's, I guess it's for people that draw, but I wanted to have a go in icing. So this was my uh, Star Wars themed one. Now, because I'm just having a play around, I'm just going to put it on a cake drum. You could make it on the side of a cake, but I'm just going to do it on a drum. And I'm just going to marble together some fondant pieces just by mixing them together, but not overly well. If you don't mix them fully, it should give you a nice marbled effect. Let's cut open and see. And then we're just going to roll it out. So, of course, you could just put this on a cake. I'm going to put it on the board. So, I'm just going to roll it out to try and get it to fit. But I'm going to put like a little sand scene at the bottom. So, don't worry if it doesn't go all the way to the bottom take any extra off the edge then I've got like a caramel ivory colored paste so this is just modeling paste and fondant that I'm using here so when I was deciding what kind of Star Wars mermaid to make I was thinking I should do something like a bit girlier and prettier and then when I was looking a lot of people had already drawn the main characters so I, and I couldn't find a mermaid that was a Jawa I think that's what they're called is it some kind of sand creature or in Star Wars um, so I thought I'd have a go at that. So it's not my usual kind of thing. But let's just cut some waves or wavy lines for the sand background. So this will be like the bed of the sea where they've been mermaids. And we're just going to layer them over the top of each other. Just make sure you fully covered the board. And we'll cut off any extra from around the edge. I'm going to put some like little bubbles in so you can tell it's sea and not sky. So I'm just going to use some round shaped cutters to just press the circle indentations in there. You can try to do them in different sizes. We don't want too many. And then let's just add a bit of colour to our sand dunes, our underwater sand dunes. I'm just using the edible powders. So these are the petal craft palettes. What I'll do is I'll put below the video uh, what it is that I've used, but these are the edible colours that I'm using here. Although technically no one's going to eat this because it's just on a cake drum. I'm going to put on a bit of blue as well so that hopefully it looks more like it's underwater. And then we're going to use some Vietnamese rice paper to try and make the ends of like the mermaid tail. So it's pretty rigid at first so we need to wet it and soak it to make the tail so it becomes flexible. So just have a plate or dish of water. Uh, you don't need much in it, just enough that we can kind of submerge this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a bit smaller, so I'm going to snap it in half first. Ooh, got some little pieces that have snapped off, but that's fine, we can keep those, we can do stuff with those as well. So let's just submerge that in the water. You don't want to leave it in there too long, otherwise it'll go really, really soggy, um, but it needs to be in long enough that it starts becoming flexible. And that little square pattern should disappear as well. I'm actually going to just add some food colour to the water that's in there. So this is the caramel ivory colour that I'm using on this one. Obviously the more food colour you put in the water, the stronger that colour will become. I want it a little bit transparent still, so I don't want to add too much. So you can see now I've taken it out, it's very flexible. You can put it down on greaseproof paper as well and then when it dries out it won't stick to it. It actually didn't stick to my board here. So once it dried, it was fine. I'm just darkening the edges with a bit of food colouring. In fact, let's just dab it on all over. When the rice paper dries, it tends to look a tiny bit darker than what it does at the moment. And then just have a bit of a play around with scrunching your pieces around. You can even use those tiny pieces that broke off by accident. So pull it into different shapes you think will look nice for a mermaid tail. It might change shape slightly when it's drying as well. And you can use a few different pieces, try and create different shapes, and then you've got a few to choose from as well, or it might be that you end up using all of them. The wetter it gets, the harder this stuff is though to pull apart, it just wants to cling together a bit. So I'm going to let those bits dry, and then let's paint our bubbles. So I'm just using some white edible powder mixed with some rejuvenator spirit to create a paint, and then we're just going to paint inside those bubbles. You want to try and have the white sort of more solid in colour around the outside edge of the bubble and then have it so it becomes more transparent as it comes to the middle of the bubble. I don't think it shows very well on camera, but it just means that way the bubbles will look like they're transparent rather than being solid white in colour. Apologies guys, I've, I've been full of cold for a while as well, so <laughs> if I sound a bit bunged up that's why. 
So we're gonna roll the main bulk of the mermaid tail first by rolling like a little carrot shape. And guys, if you do struggle with this, I now do have a full set of different mermaid tail molds. So anybody that prefers to use molds, I do have a series of different tail molds on my website, which I will make some videos for soon. Okay, so you can bend that around to whatever shape you want. And because of the Jawa's outfit, I thought rather than having scales on the mermaid tail, it would look better if we did sort of like ribbons of fabric, almost wrapped up like a mummy or something. And I'm just scuffing them up a little bit with the end of my knife, just so it looks more like scruffy fabric that looks a bit sort of weathered and worn. I'm going to paint some food colour into the gaps or into the lines that we've done. Now I have managed to splatter it everywhere by accident. I'm going to go a little bit darker up near the top and all over. And then we're just going to pat with a tiny bit of kitchen roll just the top of that. So it should take the paint off the main parts but it should leave the paint or the food colour in those lines that we've drawn. And then if you want to lighten any bits just run a bit of white dust over with a brush. And now for our body. So we're going to squeeze a bit more brown on there. And we're going to put some little lines in that sort of coming from the waist upwards. So it looks a bit like folds in fabric. Then we're going to roll some of the brown nice and thin because they wear almost like a, a big jacket. Would you say it's a jacket? A cloak? I'm not sure. But we want this to look like it's coming down from around the tail. And because it's in water, it needs to have a bit of movement to it. So we want to stick it so it looks like it's coming from behind the tail and then just play around with moving it around a little bit and we'll do the same at the other side trying to fold it to get movement into it now the jawa's head i'm not really sure if they have a face or not it just is very dark so we're just gonna take a little black piece of paste i'm gonna wrap a bit of brown around the edge for like the edge of the hood because the hood covers most of everything up you Star Wars fans will probably have a bit of a better idea of what Jawa's face actually looks like. I, I didn't really see it very well on any of the pictures. So let's flatten out that hood. Again, put some creases in it so it looks more fabric-y. And let's wrap it around, around the little sort of, it's kind of a black triangle shape-ish that I've made for the head. And we're gonna put that in place on top of our body. Now usually I think you can see their eyes kind of glowing from under the hood so we're going to put a couple of pieces of white in there for the eyes and then what we'll do is we'll try and put some powder around so they look a bit more like the glowing. I don't think I got this bit quite right to be honest. So I'm going for some pale yellow and I'm putting it just on the black area rather than on the white too much so it looks like it's kind of glowing. Let's cut a little strip to go around the body. And one for the other side. We're gonna make some little pockets. So we're gonna make some little squares and then some little semicircles to go on top for the top edge of the pocket. And these are gonna go across like that little strap that we put on earlier. Let's give him a belt. I say him, I don't know, like I presume there's female jowers as well. So I don't know if this one's a boy or a girl. Again, I could be wrong about that. You guys can let me know in the comments below. So we're going to make a little hand. So we've rolled that piece of black this time, flattening the end for the hand. We're going to do two of these. Let's cut in some little fingers. So we're going to cut in the middle and then either side to create fingers. Just shape it in a little bit with your, with your fingers by giving them a pinch. You'll see my hands are now covered in food coloring. We'll bend in an elbow. And then let's place these in the position we want them to go. So if we want our Jawa to be holding like a, a weapon of some kind, then we need to position the arms as if he's going to be holding something. But also we need to put him sleeves on as well. So let's keep those sleeves pretty baggy so that they still look like, you know, part of his big cloak. So I'm just going to position a cocktail stick in the hands to work out what position they should go in to be holding a weapon. Just going to put a little gold sort of pressed a button on the end of each of his little pocket lids and some on the belt let's just add a bit of shading so we'll go with some darker browns into the creases on these sleeves and outfit add white to any areas that you want to look brighter and more highlighted 
Now, these are the pieces that I've let dry. They haven't actually fully dried. I've been a little bit impatient, so you see they're still soft. Now, I start playing around with where to position these at the end of the mermaid tail. And look, even the little broken off ones give me quite nice, almost seaweedy like effect. But guys, do wait for them to fully dry because what I found was I played around positioning these and they were, like I say, a little bit soft, slightly wet still. What happened was it ate away at my fondant underneath. It dissolved it all and it went really sticky and messy. And because they haven't fully dried at this point, they continue to shrink when they dry. So when it had fully dried, they shrank and moved away from my tail a little bit. So do let them set fully. But you can see like these little sharp looking ones. They're just little, you know, when I was snapping them, they're just little bits that kind of snapped off and I thought they looked quite nice to add to sort of the tail, just darkening them with a bit of food color. So let's remove that cocktail stick that we put in earlier. And we're gonna use a wooden kebab skewer because it's a little bit thicker. So it's gonna be better for what I want. We'll cut it to the length. So let's turn this into a trident because I feel like that would be the weapon of choice for a mermaid or merman. So we're gonna make like the three pronged bit for the top of our trident. You will need to let this set before we put it in place and paint it. So I'm gonna place it into the hands. So the hands have still got a little bit of movement. The hands haven't set too much. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water or you can use edible glue on there just to hold it in place. And of course that will look different once it's painted up. So I'm gonna use my water activated gold paints. Again, I'll put links to all these things I'm using below the video, but I do sell most of the things in uh, my online shop. I don't sell the Vietnamese rice paper though, but you can buy that online. I think I just got mine from Amazon. So there it is finished, something a little bit different for this one. Um, I did make more mermaids from prompts from last year's mermaid and I think I might try and have a go again. Have you guys heard of mermaid before? Have a check out of their website, there is a mermaid uh, page and each May, like I say, they do do different prompts where you create your mermaids based on the theme of that day. Hope you enjoyed this one guys and I'll see you again for next time. If you liked the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.